Good Friday morning, Oswego, and thanks for waking up with us. I'm Olivia Eugenio. A Watertown man is arrested after releasing over 1,000 pounds of asbestos into the air. And later, a mayoral race was decided last night in a very unlikely coin toss. We'll have a more in-depth look at your top stories in just a moment. But first, a quick check of your weather to get you out the door with meteorologist Rob Camille. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Olivia, and good morning to the rest of you. Oswego, happy Friday morning. Pretty good morning out there. Uh, looking at your current conditions right now, 39 degrees is where the mercury sits right now. Most of cloudy skies outside, more clouds than sun uh, for the time being at the moment. Real feels checking in at 34 degrees. My opinion feels a little bit warmer than that. Um, we do have a nice calm breeze out of the south at 7 miles an hour, not like those really, really heavy winds that we saw uh, earlier on this week. Look at your radar right now. Also pretty quiet throughout central New York as well as the rest of the state. Just a little bit of precipitation up into uh, northern Ontario over Lake Superior and Lake Huron and into the Canadian Great Lakes. Now, this is the way it's going to stay for the next couple of days. It's going to be a very nice start to your weekend as we get into the later part of your weekend. So we become a little bit unsettled. We got a lot of precipitation and a lot of cold air coming in. How long is that uh, rain going to stick around and how, to how low are those temperatures going to go? I'll have your full forecast coming up in about 10 minutes. But right now, I'm going to send it back to the desk with Olivia for a look. At your top stories. All right, thank you, Rob. The Onondaga County Police Department is looking for the man who robbed a bank yesterday evening. The robbery occurred at the Salina Chase Bank around 5:30 last night. The police believe they are searching for a man in his 20s who drove away in a dark-colored sedan. Anyone with more information is asked to call 315-435-3081. A Watertown man was arrested yesterday after knowingly releasing asbestos into the air. 36-year-old Aaron Netto released over 1,000 pounds of asbestos-containing material into Jefferson County. Netto was also believed to be helped by an unidentified 50-year-old man. Netto was charged with third-degree endangering public health, safety for the environment. A weed sport man has been arrested after he conned a 90-year-old man as well as many other Cayuga residents. According to the Cayuga County Police Department, 40-year-old Daniel Humberston committed the, the thefts over a period of a few months. A Humberston was charged with grand larceny, which is a third-degree felony, and anyone who lent money to Humberston could be eligible to file a criminal complaint. 14 are left homeless and one is hurt after a fire in Fulton. Fire departments from around central New York were sent to Fulton at 1.18 a.m. to help fight the fire. It took crews between two and three hours to calm the flames because the building was in a difficult location. One resident has been taken to SUNY Upstate and one firefighter suffered minor injuries. Dozens waited in line at Destiny USA for the PlayStation 4. Gamers waited outside of Best Buy for over 14 hours yesterday evening. However, many are waiting to buy their game con console until the Xbox One comes out next week. If your nearest Best Buy has run out of PlayStation 4s, you can text 112233 to find the nearest retailer near you. We're going to take a quick break, but first let's take a look at what happened on this day in history. Hey Laker fans, remember the following, be loud, be proud, be funny, be civil, above all, be positive. We've cleaned up our act on the ice, now it's your turn to clean up yours in the stands. Malcolm, you know, energy savers last six times longer than regular bulbs. This isn't my room. It, it's, it's Baron Davis's. The basketball player? This is his room? I don't live here. Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? So, do you have any questions? What is your soup of the day? Uh, we have a mulligatani soup. Oh, do you have any specials? We have a steak special today. Oh, how is that cooked? That's pan seared and then... Does it come with a side dish? Is it grilled? Can I have it steamed? So, what do you recommend? What kind of pie do you have? You an actor. Aren't you from Ohio? Any questions? Ask questions. For the 10 questions everyone should know, go to ahrq.gov. I got no 
bowl of sugars and shocking drives at road all the time. Just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. We were just buzzed. Just buzzed? You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right, this isn't happening. You'll be fine. Eh, I feel good. Really? No, not really. Buzz driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Good morning, Oswego, and thanks for waking up with us. I'm joined by meteorologist Rob Camille. So, Rob, it's getting to that point in the semester where all you really have to do is study. You're getting all stressed out. Yep. Is this the perfect weather to study in this weekend? Is it like that perfect, like, cozy up with your textbook? Not entirely. It's kind of like the first part of the weekend is going to tease you, be like, haha, you should come outside, and then the second part of the weekend is going to be like, just kidding, you really should study. But as we look at those top weather headlines, as a matter of fact, it's beginning to feel a lot like, yeah, you all probably thought I was going to say Christmas, right? Well, actually, the first part of the weekend, that's not really true, as well as the rest of the weekend. It's more going to be like mid-spring, mid-fall weather, actually. That's what it's going to feel like with temperatures going up into the 50s and potentially hitting the 60s as we go into Sunday. But by Sunday night, the rain does come back into the area, and by Tuesday, we've got another Arctic mass coming down from Canada, which will make those temperatures tank, and I mean tank. We're talking 20-degree difference in your daytime highs, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. Right now, outside the campus center here at SUNY we go 39 degrees is where the Mercury is at right now, mostly cloudy skies overhead. Real feel of about 34 because of that wind out of the south at 7 miles per hour. Radar is pretty quiet around central New York, not a lot to speak of. Just a couple rain showers up into Canada as you go into the Great Lakes region, into northern Michigan, but down towards Lake Ontario, into the Finger Lakes. We're pretty good here as far as the day goes today. Now, as far as your Friday setup goes, we've got high pressure in control off the Mid-Atlantic just to the east of the Delmarva Peninsula. That clockwise flow is going to be bringing in all this mild air from the south and west, which means it's going to keep all these showers primarily over into Canada and into the Great Lakes region. This milder air and these sun and clouds, that's what's going to be in control for most of the day today. Now, as we go through the rest of your day, mostly cloudy skies. We're going to head a high of 52 degrees early this afternoon. Going to be a little bit breezy at times as well. Winds out of the southwest between 10 and 15 miles an hour. Timing your day out for you as we wake up 8 o'clock in the morning for those early classes if you're stepping out to go to work right about now. 39 degrees is where we're at. Mostly cloudy skies. We go through the rest of your day. That's pretty much the story. By noontime, we're going to hit uh, 48 degrees into the upper 40s in most of Oswego County and central New York as well. Your high of 53, 52, 53 in most of the areas going to be at about 2 o'clock. And by 5 o'clock, when the sun's just about to set, uh, 47 degrees is where we're going to be at as well. Now for tonight, mostly cloudy skies again. Uh, the clouds are going to start to clear up a little bit. Low of 43, winds are going to die down a little bit as well. Winds out of the south at 5 to 10 miles an hour. Now, looking at your weekend setup, the later part of your weekend is what we're going to be concerned with here. We've got a dip in the jet stream and low pressure, a low pressure system that's going to be bringing very cold air down from western Canada into the central plain. It's going to be moving slowly eastward as we go throughout the weekend. This high pressure that we were talking about today is going to move off to the east into the Canadian Maritimes. Now, as this system moves in, it's going to be bringing a lot of rain and a lot of wind to the central New York area. Timing that out for you, most of the areas are going to see the rain start to move in by Sunday afternoon into Sunday night. By Monday, it's going to be pretty much over the entire northeastern United States. Now, along with that, we've also got some serious winds that we want to uh, be concerned about, uh, gusting as high as 25, even 30 miles an hour, and occasionally higher than that as well. Now, as we look at this cold front, you can see this cold air, very cold air coming down from Canada. Timing that out Sunday into Monday. By Monday night, it is here, and by Tuesday, those temperatures will not even be getting out of the 30s. So those 60-degree temperatures we were talking about for Sunday, picture that, and two days later, we're going to be down to the 30s. Crazy weather here in Oswego. As we look at your five-day forecast, Friday, Saturday, going to be the better half of your weekend. Temperatures in the low to mid-50s for most of the area, 53 on Friday, 55 on Saturday. By Sunday, we hit our high temperature this weekend of 62 degrees, but the rain starts to move in as we go throughout the day. Monday, high 57 is when we're going to see our highest chance of rain, and no, your eyes are not deceiving you. By Tuesday, temperatures go down into the mid-30s, and we have another chance for snow here in the Oswego area. That's going to do it for me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to send it back to the desk with Olivia for a look at more of your national news. All right. Thank you, Rob. You know, if 50s, 60s, 40s, as long as I don't have to break out my winter jacket, I am all set.
The government's requests for information on Google users continues to rise. That's according to the online company's annual transparency report. The tech company says it received more inquiries about user information in the first six months of 2013 from the feds than any period before. The U.S. government also makes the most requests in the world for user data. This is Google's eighth transparency report since it started publicly sharing the statistics in 2010. It's fast food in a hurry. McDonald's is adding a third drive through window to speed up service. Customer complaints sparked the change, and the first window will collect the money, and the other two will distribute orders. McDonald's says the new window will start appearing at its restaurants next year. And if you might have noticed that there's something missing from the dining hall over the weekend. Little Page actually is not serving late night anymore. Ian Dembling has more. This is what Little Page Dining Hall now looks like on Friday and Saturday nights. Bare. No longer open for hungry students across half of the campus. Hi, I'm Ian Demling for WTOP 10 News, and on this special investigative report, I'll be giving you an in-depth look behind the scenes at Little Page Dining Hall here at SUNY Oswego. Little Page is one of Oswego's four major dining halls located on West Campus between Oneida and Onondaga Hall. A full dining staff serves hundreds every day, but in recent years, hours at Little Page have been decreasing, especially during late night, which now only runs from 8.30 to 11 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and closed on weekends. Little Page employee Adam Agin commented on this year's time change. From what I understand is they don't have late night on weekends anymore because no one showed up for late night and students didn't want to work late night on the weekends, so they just got rid of it all together. Agin may have been right, but many students are still upset, so I decided to speak with the man in charge. Craig Traub has been the director of resident dining for 37 years and explained why the change was necessary for this year. We looked at the number of people we served on those days in, on campus, and those numbers, those were our lower count days. Uh, we are still, we are open at Lakeside, and we do have the campus shuttle, which is available for people to, to, to hop on if they want to go down to, to late night at, at Lakeside. Traub says those who wish to share with him their frustrations about the dining hall can do so by filling out comment cards, which are available at every dining facility on campus. I read comment cards every day. All comment cards come from the building to, to our commissary offices, and I go through those every day uh, with responses. I have a stack on my desk right now, and I love reading them. But for now, all dining halls will be closed by 11 p.m. And according to Traub, it doesn't look like it will be changing anytime soon. We're at the right time. I don't see that changing in the future. In Oswego, I'm Ian Dembling, WTOP 10 News. You know, Olivia, one of the most upsetting things about it is the fact that we come back from WTOP so late, so often we don't get a chance to have late night at the end of the night, a quick little snack. Oh, most definitely. And I think the thing is, like, I've always lived on Lakeside, so I've always been, I've always had the luxury of always having late night. So to live on the West Campus, it just, it's so unfortunate that you, yeah. you know, because what else do you do but have to order food? And well, then you're just you can always so write in the money. comment cards and take the surveys online uh, to, if, to... Uh, address your, your complaints to Craig Trout. Next time I'll have to do this. Thank you, Ian. You're welcome. Mazatlan, Mexico was seeing a big drop in international tourism because of drug-related violence in the area. But the city fathers and the Mexican government fought back against the drug lords. They've spent more than $100 million to rejuvenate the city and make it safer. Nick pa Parker has the story. Long, sandy beaches great architecture, and the freshest seafood put to order. Mazatlan has long been known as the pearl of the Pacific, but officials say U.S. and Canadian visitors dropped by 25% from 2010 to 2012. The reason? Concerns over security. The city is situated in the state of Sinaloa, home to one of Mexico's biggest drug cartels, and violence flared in the surrounding area. Now, Mazatlan is making a comeback. The concern was security. And I mentioned to you that we invested $58 million in security. Well, see that camera right there? Those cameras are watching us 24-7. They can tell you if somebody's carrying a weapon. The bad guys figured out real, real fast that they don't belong here. I've, I came here a long time ago when I was younger, and uh, coming back seemed easy and have been felt nothing but safe and uh, welcomed. Another focus for the city was restoration. 
This is one of Mazatlan's unique selling points, a colonial town on the beach. Many of these buildings are more than 200 years old and the city has spent $120 million regenerating the area. We took a helicopter ride with the state tourism secretary who showed us the revamped port where cruise ships full of US tourists will begin arriving this month. The first in more than two years. It's probably the most important event we're going to have all year. It, it, it's going to show the cruise lines, one, that we're ready for them, two, that we've done everything that they've asked. Coming up after the break, we'll have Matt Stone with your latest entertainment news and another look at your forecast. Stay with us, you're watching WTOP 10, Top in the Morning. Hey Laker fans, remember the following. Be loud, be proud, be funny, be civil. Above all, be positive. We've cleaned up our act on the ice. Now it's your turn to clean up yours in the stands. Malcolm, you know, energy savers last six times longer than regular bulbs. This isn't my room. It, it's, it's Baron Davis's. The basketball player? This is his room? I don't live here. Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? So, do you have any questions? What is your soup of the day? Uh, we have a mulligatani soup. Oh, do you have any specials? We have a steak special today. Oh, how is that cooked? That's pan seared and then... Does it come with a side dish? Is it grilled? Can I have it steamed? So, what do you recommend? What kind of pie do you have? You an actor. Aren't you from Ohio? Any questions? Ask questions. For the 10 questions everyone should know, go to ahrq.gov. I got no pulse for losing. Shocking drives that road all the time. Just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. We just buzzed. Just buzzed? You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right, this isn't happening. You'll be fine. Eh, I feel good. Really? No, not really. Buzz driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Good morning, as we go, and thanks for waking up with us. So, Rob. It looks like it's going to be a little rainy starting this weekend, and then yep. it's going to get to be a little snowy. I just wish Oswego would make up its mind. That's I all, know. That's all me, I'm me too. It would make my job a whole lot easier, that's for sure. But for the time being, right now, as far as today goes, our top weather headlines for your Friday morning. Everybody knows the old song that everyone sings around Christmas time. It's beginning to feel a lot like... You probably thought I was going to say Christmas with that one, but unfortunately, no. Actually kind of feels like the middle of fall and the middle of spring, uh, especially with the temperatures and the, the sunny skies this weekend. Temperatures are going to be up into the 50s throughout most of the week and getting into the 60s by Sunday. But as we go through Sunday night, the rain does come back into the area. And by Tuesday, everybody's going to be trading those light sweaters for those heavy winter coats. Those temperatures are going to tank, folks. We're talking daytime highs not getting out of the mid 30s. As we look at your current conditions right now, 39 degrees here at the Campus Center, mostly cloudy skies overhead. A real feel right now of 34 degrees. Little bit of a breeze out of the south, hovering between around 3 and 8 miles an hour right now. We're checking in at 7. Uh, so it's kind of a uh, pretty calm wind out there. Not like the usual Oswego winds that we've been seeing. Uh, as we look at the radar right now, pretty clear as far as we go throughout the entirety of upstate New York, not just New York itself, but the entire Northeast as well. Just a couple showers up towards the Great Lakes that we um, don't need, really need to concern ourselves with for this point in time. For today, mostly cloudy skies is your forecast. 52 degrees for the high here in Oswego. It's going to be hovering around the 50 degree mark throughout the rest of central New York. Going to be a bit breezy as well. Winds out of the southwest between 10 and 15 miles per hour. As we look at your day planner this morning, 40 degrees around there, 39, 40 degrees for most of the viewing area, mostly cloudy skies. As we go through your day, temperatures go through the 40s. 48 by lunchtime, we hit your high of 52, 53 by about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And by the time the sun sets, we're back down into the mid 40s, mostly cloudy skies 
throughout most of your day. And as we look at your five day forecast, Friday and Saturday are going to be your two best days this weekend because of the amount of sunshine that we're going to be seeing. Temperatures are going to be in the low to mid 50s, 53 on Friday, 55 on Saturday. As we go through Sunday, temperatures warm up into the 60s. Yeah, you're reading that right, folks. 62 degrees for your high temperature on Sunday, but the rain does return as we go through the evening. By Monday, temperatures start to fall back through the 50s, and by Tuesday, yeah, you don't need to adjust your television sets, folks. By Tuesday, we're looking at temperatures not getting out of the 30s. 38, your forecast at high temperature here in Oswego, and there is a pretty decent chance we could see some snowfall. So going from sunny and 60s to snowy and 30s, pretty typical Oswego weather for this time of year. That's going to do it for me, ladies and gentlemen. I'll send it back to the desk with Olivia for a look at some more of your national news. All right. Thank you, Rob. So while the weather may not be simple, politics isn't simple either. In Albion, Idaho, a mayoral race was decided with a coin toss after an unlikely election day tie. 60 votes went to the incumbent, John Davis, and 60 for the challenger. So according to Idaho state law, the coin toss decides the winner. And last night, after a flip of the coin, Mayor Don Bowden ended up winning another term. And now we're going to have your entertainment news with Matt Stone. Thanks, Olivia. And Simon Cowell's baby mama, Lauren Silverman, signed a divorce settlement agreeing that she has a shocking penalty. If Simon goes near her seven-year-old son, she has to pay her ex a $50,000 penalty. The Simon Stay Away clause only lasts until January 2015, so presumably the kid can be around Simon any year if he's still a part of Lauren's life. Never a dull moment with Mr. Simon Cowell. Famous Jameis is trying to lead his Florida State Seminoles to the BCS National Championship, but he is fighting a much bigger battle off the field. It will likely be weeks before state prosecutors decide whether or not the Florida State star quarterback Jameis Winston will face charges stemming from a sexual battery report filed with Tallahassee police nearly a year ago. We had no knowledge of this until Wednesday, said state attorney Willie Meggs about the 11-month-old case. Definitely some interesting timing for this case to jump back into the limelight. And another slow start and three straight unsportsmanlike penalties by the defense, including a childish headbutt by linebacker Eric Walden, had the Colts looking like they'd be in a fight to hold on to first place in the AFC South. Andrew Luck and the Colts rallied from a 17-6 deficit to come back and beat the Tennessee Titans 30-27 last night at LP Field. Luck for, threw for 232 yards, and Donald Brown scored twice for the Colts in the victory that may all but clinch the division for Indianapolis. The Colts head to Arizona next week for a matchup with the Cardinals. And going over to the NBA, in 2.3 seconds, Andre Iguodala flipped the script on the Oklahoma City Thunder by hitting the biggest shot of his Golden State Warriors tenure. The Warriors stunned the Thunder 116-115, capping a back and forth game between two teams expected to contend for the Western Conference title. Russell Westbrook's three-pointer with 2.3 seconds remaining put the Thunder ahead after they trailed by 14 points early in the fourth, but it was Iguodala's last second shot that had the Warriors all smiles after last night. And finally, a quick local note, the Max Zeal basketball tournament gets underway today at Laker Hall. The Oswego women tip off at 6 against Clarkson, and the men host Lancaster Bible College at 8 p.m. That's all for me. Let's talk to Olivia. All right. Thanks, Matt. So sports has been, you know, obviously having a great week. Mm -hmm. You guys also have a great weekend, correct? Isn't You guys yep. have some major games coming up? Starting tonight. Women's basketball and men's basketball get started at 6 and 8. And then tomorrow, the tournament continues. So from 2 to 8 p.m., basketball all day. And uh, so we go men's hockey after a couple weeks. They're coming home to face Elmira on Saturday night. And we can't forget about the women. They're also women's games, correct? Women's game on Sunday as well. So starting tonight all the way until Sunday afternoon, there will be nonstop sports here on WTOP. What could be better for you guys, <laughs> right? All right, well, we need to take one last break, but when we come back, we'll have a final look at your forecast. But first, take a look at what celebs are celebrating their birthday today. T stay with us. You're watching WTOP 10, Top in the Morning. Get your Smokey on. If you see someone in danger of starting a wildfire, step in and make a difference. Because 9 out of 10 wildfires can be prevented. Only you can prevent wildfires. Down 70 to the 35, and the Cougars were getting smoked like a cheap cigar. Hey guys, you should watch our show on WTOP. What? You mean 
WTOP? No, it's WITOP. No, it's WTOP. Who told you that? Common sense? The mailbox and the traffic light. Both are ideas from the minds of African Americans. Support the United Negro College Fund because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Happening. This can't be happening. Of course it's not happening. Armored car. Listen, having money isn't about luck. Make your own coffee, save a thousand bucks a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. Good morning, as we go, and thanks for waking up with us. I'm Olivia Eugenio. One Montana man decided corny was the best way to go for his proposal to his girlfriend. He and a friend plowed this very important question in a field near Great Falls. And a few weeks later, Miles Steinbeck took his girlfriend, Olivia, what a great name, on a flight over the ranch. She was speechless when she saw the field below her. And in case you're wondering, she said yes. The couple plans to get married in the summer of 2015. And now we're going to take one final look at your forecast with meteorologist Rob Camille. Well, thank you very much, Olivia. Taking a look at your day planner for your Friday. We're going to start out this morning right around the 40 degree mark. 39 degrees here on campus is what the uh, thermometer is going to read. Mostly cloudy skies throughout the day. Temperatures are going to go through the 40s at about uh, lunchtime. We're going to check in at about 48 degrees. We're going to hit your high of 53 in the early part of the afternoon at about uh, 2 p.m. And by 5 p.m. we're going to be getting back down in the 40s, 47 degrees at 5 o'clock. Now, as always, you can follow us on Twitter at WTOP10. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com backslash WTOP10TV. And if you've got any questions or you want to send in your photos or your comments to the meteorology department, email us at meteorology at WTOP10.com. Now, I'm not going to lie. That's a pretty creative marriage proposal, if I say so myself. An entire cornfield, that's pretty sweet. The guy's definitely really <laughs> That's got to be up there in marriage proposals that, that I've ever seen That is definitely in my life. one of the. I, I think we were reading the story this morning and we were like, I don't know if I'd say yes because they took so much time or if it's just a little too weird. I'm sure it works for them. It's got to work for them. <laughs> but the weather, I think, is honestly going to be perfect for you guys because you guys have to go all the way to Laker, correct? So mm -hmm, you guys. Yep. That's going to be perfect for you guys yeah. having just a little bit of sun. But and I know you are transitioning to the live sports crew this weekend. I You're am. doing some hockey games. You ready? Really? You I, yeah. Wow. I'm, I know. I'm. I'm excited. It's a little bit on the. It's a little different, <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. I thought, you know, why not? While we're here and we have the opportunity to do sports, original productions, and news, why you can't stick with one? You can't stick with one. Absolutely. And I think Ian, you're you're joining. I am as well. As, as well. As usual, I'll be doing the live sports for for the hockey games. I'm pretty excited about it. It's always one of my favorite things to do. And then Matt is sticking with. Sticking with the basketball. I'm a basketball guy, but I run back and forth, so I'm sure I'll be seeing you around. Uh, of around. course, of course. course. So how do you, you said that some of the games are at the same time, correct? Yes. So how do you view both games? Because we obviously can't do both at the same so time. So the men's hockey games and the women's hockey games will be live on WTOP 10, and you can catch the other games on the live stream or the Oswego Athletics website. So whether you like Oswego basketball, Oswego hockey, you can see both. Now how many games total are you guys doing this weekend? I, don't count me on this, but I think it is 11. So wow. It is a big weekend for WTOP Sports, and basically we're getting geared up for Whiteout Weekend coming up in a couple of weeks. So gotcha, right after Thanksgiving break, right? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Very nice, well, very nice. Well, and then nice. there's another game next week, correct? There's going to be another game that's broadcasted on Wednesday, Yes, right? uh, we're doing basketball on Tuesday and Wednesday, so it's very busy here for us. All of the sports, all of the sports. <laughs> And that will do it for us here for the entire 10 News team. I'm Olivia Eugenio. And I'm Rob Camille. Thanks for watching Top of the Morning. Have a great Friday as we go.